Hey guys, what's up? This is Dane and Justin with ABU Games. Today we are bringing you a full box opening of the brand new set, Ixalan. Dragons, no not dragons, dinosaurs. Vampires, merfolk. Oh my. <laughs> the pirates, my friend. Oh yeah, the pirates. <laughs> That's like the main thing. <laughs> All right, Justin's gonna open this box up for us and we are gonna get started. Ixalan officially releases September 29th, which is two days from today's date. We're going to be opening these packs and they'll be in our system for sale officially as of Friday. So let's get into it. What's that? Got some really cool artwork on all these sets. The dinosaurs and even just the packaging looks really cool in this. I think one of my favorite things I saw from pre-release was the foiling on these cards. They're just awesome. I'm gonna quickly go through the commons that we have here. And get you into the uncommons. First uncommon is Field of Ruin. Second is Thundering Spineback. Third is Emissary of Sunrise. Get that there. And then our rear is the Goring Ceratops. Pretty cool. And then we have a card and the Vampire Token. Now something that is kind of cool that's coming up is the FNM promos will be going away, but they'll be turning into foil tokens and we have uh, the next three months are gonna be awesome Ixalan tokens. All right, there we go with our next pack. Face Tillman Vampire Zeal. A nice little spread of the commons. Our first uncommon is Shattering Light, followed by Lurking Chupacabra. And then a bright reprisal, and we have the Shadow Carnival as our rare. Turn of Vehicles, we last saw this at Ease and Aether Revolt. And we have our first foil of the box, Blossoming Dryad. Not too bad. Basic Planes, and something interesting about these basic, this Basic Planes, it's one of the set of the Basic Lands, each one has one that you'll notice over here, Jace is found in the artwork, He's just wandering Ixalan. So, something interesting to keep your eyes open for. And, you know, gotta have a pirate. Now, is that one of the flip artifacts that flips over into no. something else? Okay. All the flip artifacts have a symbol. You will, I'll show you the symbol when we encounter it. Awesome, cool. That's something of notability to realize when we're actually getting into the artifacts and some of the enchantments of this set. I see here some of the commons here. We get into a Sentinel Totem, Lightning Rig Crew, Charging Monster Sword, and our rare, our uh, first legendary. And our first Shana. mythic. Oh, yeah, sorry, mythic. <laughs> legendary creature, but uh, Voice of Thunder to Shauna. I think she's gonna go into Merfolk, probably more of a commander card. There's another one of them. Yeah, here we have another the chase. And uh, our first treasure token. That's cool. All right, moving into our next pack here. So we've got another lovely range of commons. And right here is our first uncommon of this pack, makeshift munitions. Followed by Vine Super Mystic, Fury, and here we go. Uh, I'm gonna probably butcher the name, but it looks like Thailand, uh, Thailand's Shapeshifter. I've never been good at first pronouncing these <laughs> names. I think that's one of the Planeswalkers from this set. It isn't. It, it's more reference to one of the characters tied that's... into the um, 
the the uh, Aztec Empire that worships the dinosaurs of the plane. Oh, no, okay. Another treasure token. Eh, not, nothing too bad in that one. That's Drowber. Starts us off. Stormfleet Aerialist. Vicious Conquistador. Dark Nourishment. And our rare is Bonded Horn Carp. Oh, nope, that's not our rare. Oh, there we go. There we go. Go right. <laughs> this is one of the nice cards. If you'll notice here, this little symbol signifies that it's one of the flip cards. And if you just take a moment here, after fulfilling the requirements, it becomes the legendary land. Because this is highest cradle. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably one of the best flip cards that we have in the set, as it turns into well our functional reprint of Gaia's Cradle. Yeah. Wondering how much play it'll actually see. I saw a lot of play of it during the pre-release. I think it has definitely a good potential of being strong in any uh, good creature deck. It's a good ramp, especially for dinosaurs. Yeah, that's true. But also definitely find its home into several uh, commander decks without question. So, another lovely wave of commons. All right, and here we have Rallying Roar. Raptor Hatchling, my wife loves this card. <laughs> it's a cool card. Sky Terror, which is an excellent um, yeah, that's a good one. Two drop for your uh, dinosaurs, flying and menace. <laughs> Seems good to get that mm -hmm. out early. And here we go. Here's another one of our legendary vampires, Marvren Finn, Dark Apostle. Not sure how much play he's going to see, but I'm sure if we get a little bit more support from vampires, he'll find himself a good home in standard. Uh, if not standard, he'll definitely find a home in a tribal vampire commander deck. Yeah, we had just had that 2017 commander Edgar. Yep. Edgar Markov be released, so mm -hmm. I feel like he's a very nice fit. You have like an aristocrat sort of build. Going through some more commons here. We got a sleek schooner. A savage stomp. A marauding looter and another mythic boneyard parlay. I guess I get all the good facts. Uh, <laughs> so far, but we've still got a whole box still yeah. to go. And another cool treasure token, different uh, art on that one. So. Yeah, something nice about all the treasure tokens is there's four different uh, artworks to the treasure tokens, one tied to each of the four tribes of Ixalan. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Some back end lore. Pretty neat. Yeah. All right. So here we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and start just thumbing through all of our commons a little quicker so we can get through to the good stuff. Favorable wins. This is a nice reprint. Yeah, I enjoyed that reprint. It's definitely one that I think we'll see play if we see a good stable deck that, that has a lot of flyers. Kite Sail, Food Bear, another. Fine Pirates, River Snake, and Sword Point Diplomacy. Ooh. An interesting card. Definitely one that may see some casual play. Don't know if it's going to be good enough for standard, but you know, it definitely, the card, the card draw versus fun paying life is always effective. But it does still give your opponent the choice, which in my opinion has always been a little bit of a handicap when it comes to cards. Yeah, that's very true. Trove of Temptation. Kimina Seeker. Shaper of Nature. And a Deep Root Champion. And with a cool island and a Merfolk token. Pretty straightforward pack on that one. They yeah. can't all be mythics. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so through our commons, 
Perilous Voyage. And this is part five of the story spotlight cards. So it'll be interesting to see what what it is going to be going off with the card lore of Vraska, try, first time Vraska tried to prevent death. It'll be interesting to see what exactly is going on with Ixalan with Vraska on that front. We have Wanted Scoundrels, Bellowing Edulosaur, and Hostage Taker. Nice. Another pirate, and pirates, from what I saw at Pre-Release, could definitely find themselves at home uh, in standard, in tribal, standard, in a tribal deck. Yeah, I, I think so too. Especially, uh, it's a common, a one-drop black. Burns two pirates back from the grave. I'll have to see if I see it here. But it was, it was so good. It did such awesome work for me in pre-release. Heartless Pillage, Stormfleet Spy, Raging Raptors, that was a fun one to deal with, and Ashes of Abohirin. This one, I feel, is just awesome. <laughs> Players can't cast spells from graveyards or activate abilities of cards in graveyards. Whenever a creature dies, you gain one life. That card just seems great. Nice Swamp and an Illusion token for our Jace Planeswalker, maybe somewhere in this box. Definitely a chance, we've only seen a couple of the Mythics. All right, so, going through our, and then but here we have Dustborn Sky Marcher, Navigator's Ruin, Deathless Ancient, and our rare, Sanding Sacrifice. Yeah. Seems pretty cool. Yeah, definitely in a good life game. Recycles itself into the deck, so. I feel, I, I really like the white vampires in this set. It's kind of cool that they brought that mechanic, sort of, or not mechanic, but card type in. We've, you know, we've seen black and red vampires, but. I, I definitely think adding white to vampires is interesting. Um, uh, uh, honestly, it, probably a very good choice in my opinion. Um, uh, it just adds more variety and more, more. I have to uh, talk about this card for a second. There so is. the artwork on this <laughs> looks so much like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> and my favorite thing to do during pre-release was Nicolas Cage someone turn one. <laughs> I thought it was pretty hilarious. Lightning strike. I am so stoked to see this back. In standard, this is a card that single-handedly is going to bring me back to standard. It's a good card. Not a lightning bolt, but it's close. Yeah. Here we have another legendary pirate. Captain Lannery Storm. Haste. And here we have another one of those Jace lands. And cool Viking. Viking vampire treasure. Vampire conquistador treasure. <laughs> yep. All right, so here we go. Another Sentinel Totem, Lightning Crew, Snapping Sailback, and Burning Sun's Avatar. Nice, nice dinosaur. That's the buy a box promo. That is the buy a box promo. So anyone who buys a box while supplies last in store, this is not a thing we can pass out uh, to online purchases, but if you come into the retail store, you buy a box, you get a promo version of this card, you'll be able to add to your collection and build your deck around if you choose to go dinosaurs. That seems to be a good one. All right, we've got a Kite Sail Freebooter, Bishop of the Bloodstained, Air Elemental, and Treasure Map. Let's oh. take a look at that. So two, it's an artifact. When it flips, turns into a land here, colorless, sack it, uh, sacrifice a treasure, draw a card. Pretty cool. Yeah, one of the first flip cards that was revealed in the spoiler season. So. Yeah, they use that artwork for a lot of their promotional stuff too. Oh yes. So Pillars of Origins. Stormfleet Arsonist, Dire Fleet Captain. 
Ah, here's a nice one, the Carnage Tyrant. This guy is definitely going to be seeing a lot of play in Standard, especially within Tribal Dinosaurs, but even in anything that has a good solid um, mana to get up to the six mana that has a solid strength in green because this is just going to be seen uh, play against a lot of the control decks. It's going to be, it's basically the closest reprint to Gaia's Revenge uh, that we've seen in a long time. Yeah, that's really cool. He's definitely a beast for sure, a tyrant. <laughs> Slice in Twain. Another nice reprint. Bonded Horn Crest. Ixalan's Binding has the nice Jace entry into Ixalan right yep. there. This is the first of the story cards. Jace awoke to certainty that he was lost, is the flavor text on that card. Pretty cool. And we have a Sanctum Seeker as our rare. And a nice hijack foil. Mountain with the vampire token. Something I do want to touch on with these foils is these are close to full art foils. I mean, this extends all the way onto the black, all the way onto you kind of see some graying essentially in the black because it extends all the way out. But yeah, the foil breaches the entire border. All right, so here we have. Bishop's Shoulders, another duress. Okay, so we got Ruthless Knave, Charter Course, which is gonna possibly see some interesting play depending on your way your deck is built. An Atzoken Archer and Arcane Adaption. That's a cool card too. I feel like that's gonna be a nice tribal card. Mm-hmm. That's one thing I have, I have to comment about Ixlon. Um, as I got back into, I've been in uh, Magic, I got back into Magic most, uh, mostly back with Lorwyn, and I've always enjoyed the tribal theme, so I think it's going to be nice and strong. Yeah. Steadfast Armosaur, another favorable wins. Raging Swordtooth. Daring Saboteur is our rare. A nice island and a sweet dinosaur. Alright, so here we go with our next batch of commons. Commune with dinosaurs, a nice common helping this dinosaur tribal. And here we have emergent growth, dead eye plunderers. Adunato Vanguard and Settle the Wreckage. That seems like a sweet card. That, that is a sweet card. It'll be very interesting to see how much play it sees. It's definitely nice to see a four mana uh, removal, mass removal spell back in the format. Not only that, it exiles them. It doesn't it's even just put them in the graveyard, it, it exiles them, so. Some pretty, pretty deep stuff there. We got an Inspiring Cleric, Deep Root Waters, Glorifier of Dusk. Oh, and mm -hmm. we got an. Oh, that's, there we go. That's crazy. Yeah, this is actually not uncommon. We, we've had, we've seen this. I've seen this a couple times. When there's a foil card and a flip card, mm -hmm. the foil actually comes before the flip. Oh, okay. And right here is another one of our flip cards, the Blood Fast. Goes into Sacrifice a Creature, you gain life equal to the Sacrifice Creature's toughness. A nice functional card. reprint for Diamond Valley. Yeah. Seems awesome. And there's the, uh, I would say that's the dinosaur. Oh tribe. yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's that's the treasure from the people who serve and worship dinosaurs. Very nice. Well, if you live on Jurassic Park, I'd probably serve and worship dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> understandable. So we have dinosaur stampede, the epic huntmaster, 
Walk the Plank. Nice. Another nice black target creature removal spell. Um, a lot of these non this creature have proven to see a lot of play. And we have our rarest Dead Eye Tracker. And we have a foil basic land. Nice. And one more folk token is our token. I like that this set's giving a lot of tokens out. It's nice when you have, you know, uh, tribal sets. Uh, Dusk Legion Dreadnought, Wily Goblin. That's cool. I don't even know what the goblin is. There's a few. Drover of the Mighty. And the Fell Flagship. I see. Yeah. That, that flagship will see some fringe play or some dedicated play in the Pirates deck. Mm -hmm. nothing, for nothing more than just the fact that it is um, a buff to the, to the Pirates. Got a Seeker Square Foil, Mountain, and a Plant Token. Alright. Got to say I love seeing Opt. That's a nice card. Yeah, that is a nice card. We'll, we'll see how much play in modern it sees as it's the closest thing to Serum, to Serum Visions we've seen in a while. The vicious Conquistador, Belligerent Fontadon, Merfolk Branch Walker, and the Shaper's Sanctum. I have to say the Shaper's Sanctum could be seeing some play, nice one drop that allows any time your creatures are targeted by a spell, that your opponent controls drawing cards, and drawing cards is, you know, one of the best cards you can get. This card here, March of the Drown, is what I was talking about earlier, the one drop black. Return a creature card from the graveyard to your hand, or return two target pirate cards from the graveyard to your hand. So this was, this card did work for me in the pre-release. It was just so nice to have pirates and then just get in, kind of go wide with pirates, and then be able to, you know, get them back when I needed them. Uh, Raiders Wake, Bright Reprisal, Dead Eye Quartermaster, and Sunbird Invocation. Not the invocations that we've been seeing in the last few sets, but still cool. And a vampire token. Okay. And another nice wave of commons. We've seen all, if not most, if not all of those by now. We've got a Verdant Rebirth. A Siren Storm Tamer, another Chupacabra, uh, and here we have the Conqueror's Galleon. This is a sick this, flip card. This is a nice one, flips into the Conqueror's Foothold and gives you just a nice solid variety of options. Not a bad card. Uh, not sure how much play it'll see in Standard, but yeah, definitely, definitely has the potential. I like the... Uh... <laughs> kind of like Staff of Dominance sort of thing on a land. Mm -hmm. There's so many options, it's just so nice. Stormfleet Aerialist, Dark Nourishment, Tempest Collar, and Spell Swindle. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do an interesting one to see if it Spell. sees any play outside of Commander. Yeah. Spell Swindle's cool, but I just feel like Banner Drain's better. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> but having two of those effects is, is very nice. It is. So here we have a speaker, a rallying roar, another Sky Tyrant, and a River's Reboot. Look, another one of the story spotlight cards. Those Merfolk are pissed. <laughs> yeah, no, obviously Merfolk don't like the pirate team in their waterways. <laughs> Why? What's wrong? What? Are, are they doing something bad? <laughs> I don't know. You know pirates, treasure. Probably may have treasure. Pirates don't pull out one. Probably true. Rigging Runner. Savage Stomp. Fiery Cannondale. And Verdant Sun's Avatar. Another one of our avatars. If only we could have gotten a Verdant Catacombs in the set. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, given its recent reprint in the last Modern Masters, I'm not surprised we didn't. <laughs> Very true. Alright, so here we have a Grim Captain's Call, Elaborate Fire Cannon, a River Snake, nice 
And a Herald of the Secret Streams. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Merfolk back. Definitely. <laughs> that went strong with the Merfolk in that one. It's kind of cool that some of these packs are kind of, I know they're all random, but seem to be somewhat themed in a way. They, they, they definitely hold a feeling that there's theme to them, even though they're completely randomized. Wanted Scoundrels, my MVP from <laughs> from pre-release, Field of Ruin, Emissary of Surprise, and another um, mythic, legendary Admiral Beckett Brass. Yeah. Definitely an awesome pirate card. Definitely will be seeing some play in Commander, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's four mythics so far if I counted that, so. If the, if the box average is on target, there's one mythic left that we have not seen, and we have not seen any of the three planeswalkers yet, so maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find ourselves a planeswalker. So here's Lookouts, just for soul, Rotting Looter, Walk the Plank, and Fathom Fleet Captain. Nice. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll be in our last pack. If you guys watched my pre-release pack opening and box opening, it was, uh, Jace was sitting in my last pack. All right, Trove of Temptation, Shaper of Nature, a Raptor Hatchling, Priest of the Awakening Sun. Oh, that's cool, an opt. A foil opt. Yeah. That is probably a foil common that's gonna be worth more than several of the foil rares. I believe you're correct. All right, so going through our commons, another Perilous Voyage, another Bellowing, another Thundering Spineback, and a Star of Extinction. This is our fifth mythic. So we've got ourselves no Planeswalkers. Nice Forest. Nice Jace Forest. And another Treasure. Shift Munitions, Raging Raptors, Call to the Feast, and Ruin Raider was the last pack I'll be opening today. Yeah, and here is our last pack of the box. Our Cream Collins, Fine Shaper, Imperial Lancer, Imperial Ariasaur, and Legion's Landing. Another one of our flip cards. This one's really cool because um, Ultra Pro made a dual-sided mat based on uh, this card specifically. Very cool. I got it and played with it in the pre-release. That's also what we opened the pre-release pack on. Very cool. All right, guys. Well, that was our box opening for Ixalan. Once again, these cards will be for purchase on Friday, September 29th at abugames.com or visit us in store. If you want to buy the box, you get the buy the box promo. And we also will be doing the uh, opening of the buy a box pack um, closer to Friday. So we will see you guys then. And thanks for stopping by. Okay, see you guys.